in the morning. Can you believe this ball game at Shea? Oh, brother. So the winning run is at second base with two out, three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. Man, I got to tell you, chills. I'm getting chills just listening to that on the line right now. I am so excited and honored to have the one and only Mookie Wilson on the line right now. Good morning. Yeah, I got you. Good morning. How you doing? I got to tell you that audio, I don't know about you, but it still gives me chills. <laughs> it, it is quite amazing. It is amazing even when I see it today. It's something else. It really is. I got to tell you, I missed game. Uh, I missed game six. I was at game seven. I gave up. Uh, I gave up game six tickets to my uh, my girlfriend's father at the time. Oh. Ah, ah, what a game! <laughs> Although I got to tell you, you try to get the brownie points and miss the game. I missed the game. Seven was pretty good though, as a Mets fan. Uh, so it's great. You're coming up to the area here. Uh, this will be happening on May 16th, along with whoever would have thought this would happen, but along with Billy Buckner. How about? Oh, oh yes, for how, sure. How about that? You guys uh, go on, and the, the questions you must have to answer have got to be awesome. Uh, yeah, we actually do some a lot of Q and A's, and I, I tell you what, the fans are so. I mean, it's just really nice the way the fans really are interested in, 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 in what was going on, the behind the scenes stuff, and all that's our relationship, and it's just been great. You know, I, I he had uh, you know I'm not a I'm not a fan, but he had a great career and so remembered for that one moment. Uh, that's tough. Well, you know, he he has had a a, a great career. Um, you know, borderline Hall of Famer. That's what I, what I always say. I think his numbers are, are, are great. Um, and I think people tend to forget how good a ball player he really was. And um, to be to let that one play kind of define who he was. You know, I guess that can be a little bit bothersome sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk about you. That's uh, that's the the exciting thing for uh, for us right now. Uh, you went through a point where you uh, you really felt that the Mets kind of just turned their back on you. Well, you know, I you know I, I think that you know I, I wouldn't be as strong as he to turn the back, but I do think that um, they have undervalued um, my abilities. I, I think that um, you know as to where I was a little angry and you know maybe disappointed, maybe a better word, disappointed that I haven't been utilized more. Yeah, and um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not the first person in this world that's been. You know, displeased with the, the way organization you know, has used them. So, yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, I just don't think that it should be all that surprising. Um, but because this is the world that we live in, and um, you just you just have to move on and, and do what you have to do. Listen, I've I've been through. Uh, I, at the time, I was the uh, the public address announcer, and I did the play by play on radio for the Little Falls Mets in the New York Penn League. And okay. I, I was a huge fan. And then the Mets win in '86. Enormous. And then, like every other situation except for the Yankees, the Mets go in the front office and they completely dismantled the entire team. The chemistry disappeared. How did that happen? I, I mean, I'm still waiting for that explanation myself. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. I don't know how that happened or what, what thinking went into the decision-making there. I have no idea. Um, but I thought that was the, probably the first mistake uh, right there. People say, well, you should have won more championships. We didn't have the same personnel. We did not have the same personnel from the very first game. I mean, after 86, we'd immediately get rid of two guys. Yeah. We lose two guys, two key components. I mean, people forget how important Ray Knight and Kevin Mitchell were to that club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Ray Knight, of course, was uh, was MVP. And it yeah. just that, that the dismantling began. And, I, I mean, talk about chemistry. That team had um, amazing chemistry, and when you take that away, we're, uh, it, it kind of, you know, everybody's, everybody's a professional. You take away the chemistry, and what do you have left? Well, you know, I, I think people under, I don't think they look at chemistry as a, a viable component. They, I mean, they look at numbers, you know. Yeah. Well, this guy hit 320, this guy hit 280, but, you know, you can make an argument that talent-wise, the team maybe had been better, but... You know, when you put the, the chemistry and the personalities, you know, to with that, yeah. we weren't as good a ball club. There was a little bit, you know, of, you know, dissension in the clubhouse a little bit. You know, we, yeah, we got Kevin McReynolds, who was a great ball player. Don't get me wrong. He was a good ball player, but he wasn't a New Yorker. Yeah, we brought yeah. in the um, Greg, Greg Jeffries came in, who we knew was a good ball player, but 
But then again, he didn't really get along with the other players. And, and all of this is caused the, the team just really did not perform the way it should have. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, well, you're professional, you should be able to overcome all that. Well, it, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. The clubhouse means a lot. Well, you think about uh, uh, Gary Carter, and, and, and really the move for bringing Keith Hernandez in was really important for the uh, 86 Mets. Well, you know, bringing Keith Hernandez in was, was was vital. We had a lot of young ball players with some talent, but we didn't have any um, experience in terms of championships and in, in, in terms of winning. I mean, I had been there for a couple of years, but I really hadn't won anything. You know, yeah. you know, I. But so we needed someone who could be able to to help us get over that that hump. And and again, it was a great addition, but the number one addition was adding Keith Hernandez. I really, yeah. I truly yeah. believe that. Uh, Andrew has a question. So, Mookie, you know, we know that Bill Buckner gets a lot of flack from Red Sox fans, but how are you received by Red Sox fans when you ever come across a fan of the Red Sox? How do they, how do they react to you? What do they say to you? I get, uh, surprisingly, I tell you, I've, I always get treated very, very warmly um, by the Red Sox fans. They say, oh, you broke my heart, and that's <laughs> all it is. And then we have a great dialogue. We, we talk about the game and the series and all that kind of stuff. And it's really, really been good. I mean, uh, you know, you would think this way, you know, the, we hate Mookie Wilson. No, I mean, all they would say was that you broke my heart. But other than that, yeah. I've been received very well by Red Sox fans, very well. Hey, I want to uh, go in uh, just for, uh, for a second. And uh, there's the at-bat. It's 10th inning. Um, uh, Shea Stadium, Game Six, and that at bat when you hit that bouncer down the first baseline, before it reaches Buckner, because uh, I mean you guys see things so much better than we do. Uh, we can play it in slow motion, but before it hits Buckner, you had to be like, Ugh. I mean, what was going through your head? Well, to be honest with you, when I first hit the ball, number one. I didn't hit it very well. It was a pitch that I really should have handled better than what I did. I didn't hit it very well. And when the ball left the bat, I said something. I'm not going to repeat what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said something. You know, and then all of a sudden, everything's in slow motion. I'm running. So I'm thinking, I'm like, run. So I'm running hard. It was absolutely no chance of my making it, but I'm running anyway. Yeah. And that's just going slowly, and it goes between his legs. I said something else I shouldn't have said when it went to So, I don't, if you ever play baseball or tennis or anything and things don't work out the way you envision them to, you say little things, and that, that was so different. And then when it went between things, I just kept going to second base. Don't ask me why, but I was running second base, but the game was over, so... Briefly, that's how it all turned, and that's what Mookie Wilson was thinking at the time. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, uh, how many uh, little league, high school coaches, college coaches? What do they tell you when you hit the ball? Run it out, run mm -hmm. it out, and uh, you know, here here was the Mookie Wilson exa Wilson example of why you just run it out. Yeah, for the millionth time, I've heard that and they've preached that you always run it out, you always run it out. You never know the guy might fall down and break his legs or something. Whatever <laughs> excuse you give the kid to go always run, right. all those times it worked. <laughs> well, it, it worked, worked one time. So it is, it's validation to all that preaching. You all your little league coaches, you know, teach these kids you always run it because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, we're talking to Mookie Wilson, none other than Mookie Wilson, who is coming to town. On May 16th, and we'll be uh, speaking. It's called a special event called Green and Gold event at, uh, at Herk Herkimer College. And it'll be $50 a person. Can be picked, uh, tickets can be picked up at the Herkimer website. It's herkimer.edu slash green and gold or by calling 866-0300 before Friday, May 8th. And, uh, and Mookie, the, uh, uh, you must... What are some of the crazy questions people ask uh, uh, about the two of you, having both of you there on that same stage? You've got to have gotten some pretty cool questions. Well, the, the questions you know, vary, you know, um, you know in, 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 in terms of, you know, you know, how do we meet? You know, what was the first thing? What was the first time we got together and, and, and stuff of that nature? Um, do you feel sorry for Bill Buckner? And, and that, that, so those are general questions that, that they ask. You know, and you know, and, and the stuff. And you know, they said, "Well, did, you know, they asked me, did I know Bill before that, and, and, and everything of that nature." And they asked me, "How did I meet Bill?" That's yeah. one big question. I, yeah. I tell him I played with his brother in my leagues. Oh, so I, I didn't know, know that. From that. Wow. So, you know, so those are the kind of questions that we get. 
and um, and stuff like that. Then they ask us questions about the team that we're on. You know, was the team as crazy as it was? You know, and then they they ask Bill questions about his team for you know why did they take Roger out and yeah. all kinds of crazy, all kinds of questions like that. And it's a very good, it's a very good conversation, it really is. And look at what has happened to the Red Sox, huh? I mean, oh yeah, from not being able to win them to. Uh, they they really turned uh, really turned things around and that year for the Mets 1986. It, it was you know uh, the progression from 83 to 84, 85, and then 86. You just knew something special. I mean that whole amazing thing worked right there because it seemed like you were never dead. The team all year long was never dead. You won games you never should have won all season long. Well, I, I think that comes from. Like you said, the, the, the 84 season, which was the big season. I think that big 84 season was the season where we actually turned the corner. Yeah. And we knew we had something special at 85. And in 86, was just a follow-up from 85. But you're right. I think we led the world and come from behind victories. And, you know, there was no amount of runs that was unsurmountable for us. We could come back from anything, and we really felt that. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I saw Coming back in the AC should have surprised us, but given the situation and the magnitude of the event, you know, and and and, and the two outs and, and and the two strikes on everybody, you know, that's the only thing that was in doubt at that point. Other than that, this team was known for its comeback from coming from behind victories. Uh, I know we're probably about close to getting uh, to getting cut off, but I want to remind people uh, tickets are available uh, right now by calling a six six zero three hundred or going to Herkimer's website. Uh, $50 a person, Mookie Wilson, and, yes, Billy Buckner on the same stage together. Awesome. And it's such an honor to talk to you, Mookie. Really a huge honor to speak to you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. First news with Keeler in the morning. Weekday mornings at 6 on WIBX and WIBX950.com.